Um, if you would open your Bibles to a couple of places today, Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, and uh, Romans chapter 12. Mark chapter 11 and Romans chapter 12. How many of y'all can find two places? I know all the ladies can. I know all the, they're multitaskers. They're anointed to do it. Guys were like, no, I'm not even going to try. I'm going to do one thing at a time. My brain can only handle that. So uh, for me, I have it all in my iPad, so it's not fair at all. I have everything right here, everything right here. Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11 and um, Romans chapter 12. When you have one of those places, at least let me know. All right, let me know. Anybody have two? Who has two for real? Come on now, don't lie up in this church. Man, the nine o'clock service, y'all smart people. Got the smart crowd out this morning. Oh, man. Mark chapter 11, and um, we're going to be, begin by looking at verse 12. Are you ready? It says, now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. Talking about Jesus. I mean, Jesus got hungry, apparently. He did. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, oh, bless you, little fig tree. No, that's not what he said. He said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Didn't that seem a little, a little harsh to the fig tree, doesn't it? Seems a little bit, but he says, let no one eat from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. His disciples what? They heard what had just happened and what he had just uh, said to that little fig tree. Now turn to verse 20 here, same chapter. It says, now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree. Which fig tree? Same fig tree that he talked to, that he was looking for figs on, and there was none there. It says, they saw the fig tree, and it was dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, he said, I, yeah, I remember what happened yesterday. He said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. As if Jesus would be surprised that what he said actually happened. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Verse 23, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, he's taking it up a level here, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. All right, so let's just think about what's happening here. First of all, Jesus was hungry. He wanted something to eat. He saw a fig tree, had leaves on it, went there. There's no figs on the tree. He cursed the tree. They walk him by the tree the next day and the fig tree is withered. It is dead. And, and, and who, who notices here what happened? Peter, he says, Rabbi, look, the, the, tree's, the tree's withered. It's dead. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Now, um, Greek scholars actually say that it would be best translated where it says have faith in God. It'd be best translated this way, have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith or have the faith of God. Have the faith of God. So he's not like totally changing directions here because you if you read the story and then he says, have faith in God, it really doesn't make sense to what's happening there. But if you understand what he's saying here, he's really saying, have the God kind of faith. And then he's explaining how that faith works. And that makes total sense to what's happening in this picture here. He says, have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Let me just start by saying this. If Jesus told his disciples to have the God kind of faith and there was no way for them to have the God kind of faith, Jesus would be unjust just, wouldn't he? If he told his disciples, if he told Peter, have the God kind of faith, but really he's saying, actually, there's no way you can have the God kind of faith. I'm God here on this earth. I'm the only one and can do this sort of thing. Then that would be unfair of Jesus to tell his disciples. In fact, it would be, it would be supremely like almost, almost mean to, to tell them to have the God kind of faith and then say that you can move mountains when really he's saying, actually, no, I'm the only one who can move mountains. 
But a lot of times when we think about God, we think about Jesus, we think about miracles, we think about mountains being moved, we think that's only something that Jesus can do. And of course our trust and our faith is in him, but Jesus is saying here, he says, you can move mountains. Did you notice that right here, he says, whoever, how many whoever's do we have in the house? Is that everyone? It should be everyone. Whoever, whoever says to this mountain, I mean, can you imagine if you're hanging out with Jesus, Jesus is pointing at a mountain, whoever says to this mountain, this mountain, what? Be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done. He will have whatever he says, whoever, whoever. So he said, listen, have the God kind of faith. And the God kind of faith does this sort of thing. It believes and it speaks and it gets magnificent results so much to the point that even mountains could be removed. What is he saying? There is basically nothing impossible when the God kind of faith is active in your life. There is nothing impossible when you have the God kind of faith, the faith of God active in your life. But where does this, this faith come from? How, how can you have this kind of faith? Well, Romans 10 and verse 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Those words literally in the Greek means to hear and have understanding. Hear and have understanding or revelation. So to hear God, what God says in his word, what he is speaking, take that to heart, get revelation on it, and he says that will produce faith in your heart. So it's not complicated on how faith comes. In fact, he says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's one of the reasons I endeavor, we endeavor to give you as much word as possible when we get together because we want your faith to be strong. We want to have mountain movers in the CWC family. We want to have people who see mountains removed in their life. And it's not gonna come just by my opinion of everything that's going on in this world, but it will come by faith that is produced from the word of God. Praise God. The apostle Paul actually said it this way. He says, this is the word of faith that we preach. The word of faith which we preach. What is he saying? He's saying when we preach, he says there should be faith as an evidence that we preached. That means if I did a good job of ministering or preaching or teaching the word, or, or even if you're getting together in a connect group and you're gathering around the word of God, you should leave with more faith than you walked in with. You should leave and go, man, my faith is strong. My faith is quick and my faith is alive. I'm believing God for some things. And maybe if you walked in here hopeless or doubtful or, or in, a, in, a, in a challenging situation or uh, with a mountain range in your life, you can, you can be right in the middle of this service and say, I'm believing God for some things here. I'm believing for mountains to be removed in my life. I'm believing for the scenery to change in my life. I believe that things are changing in my life and whatever that mountain may be in your life, whether it's finances, whether it's with your health, or whether it's, it's a family thing, or, or whatever it may be, you can see the mountains removed in your life. He says, who, whoever, whosoever, how many whoever's do we have in the house? One more time. He says, this is the word of faith that we preach. Now, I know when you when you say have the God kind of faith or have the faith of God, there's automatically a lot of people who are, are listening who say, well, that's certainly not me. I mean, that's maybe the preacher has some faith. Maybe some of the people on staff has some faith. Maybe my mama who prayed for me for 50 years has a whole lot of faith or my grandma or, you know, my, the most spiritual person that I've ever heard pray. They have some faith, but, but me, I, I don't have faith. Well, let me ask you a question. How many in here have made Jesus the Lord of your life? You've called on Jesus. You've made Jesus the Lord of your life. All right, you have faith. In fact, you couldn't be saved without it. I said you couldn't be saved without it. In fact, in Ephesians it says, by grace we are saved through 
faith. By grace we are saved through faith. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor that he demonstrated so powerfully and mightily through his son, Jesus Christ. When he went to the cross, poured out his blood, rose again, died on that cross, rose again on that third day, alive forevermore. That's the grace of God toward us. That's the goodness of God toward us. But we're saved by his grace through faith. Through faith. So then, when you heard the good news about Jesus Christ, anybody remember the first time you heard about Jesus? And you, 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 in, two of you, praise God. Anybody remember the first time you heard about Jesus and something rose up in your heart and you go, man, I believe that God was good enough to send Jesus for me. And you heard that if I call on the name of the Lord, I shall be saved. If I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, I believe salvation will come into my, my life. I believe I'll receive the goodness of God. I believe I'll be forgiven. I believe I'll be redeemed, right? What's happening in that moment? Faith is rising up in your heart. Faith is rising up in your heart. Where, where's it coming from? From somebody, whether it was somebody just telling you a testimony, someone giving you a scripture, even in a service or however it came, but you heard that in your ears. You heard it or you saw it, you got a revelation of it somehow, and you said, I'm gonna lay hold of God's grace in my life. And when you called on Jesus, even if it was as simple as Jesus, even if it was just that simple, that was your faith being released and accessing the grace of God in your life. That was the God kind of faith at work in your life. Congratulations. You have a measure of the God kind of faith. Now smile at your neighbor and say, man, it's, things must be getting better for me. They got to be getting better. Now in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, all of you people who proclaimed to have both places, says it this way, says, for I, I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as, and notice this last phrase of this verse, God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So pastor, are you saying that everyone on the planet has faith? No, I'm not saying, and that's not what he's saying. He says, everyone, each one's been dealt a measure of faith. Each one, who's the each ones he's talking about? Well, if you look at the context of scripture, he's talking to the brethren. The brethren, how many brethren? We already, we already noticed a bunch of you. The brethren, all the brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, who've called on Jesus, made him the Lord of their life, have a measure of the God kind of faith. You have a measure of the God kind of faith. This kind of faith is very potent. It's got a real kick to it. It can really make some things change in your life. It's the same faith that created the world in the beginning. That same faith that created the world in the beginning in Hebrews chapter 11. In that, in that same faith, you have a measure of that same kind of faith, the God kind of faith. When God spoke the world into existence and creation happened because of his word, that was faith. That was by faith, by faith, by faith. In fact, if you look throughout the rest of Hebrews chapter 11, I believe it's 21 times that it says by faith, through faith, right? By faith, through faith. I like the message Bible. It says by an act of faith. I like that, by an act of faith. So all of these amazing, supernatural, miraculous things that a lot of these people that you even see up here that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 are all by faith. They tapped into something supernatural that allowed them to do something supernatural by, by their faith, by their faith. This faith, if it has enough power, the God kind of faith to create the worlds in the beginning and frame the world, how many of you know your faith can frame your world? Your faith can frame your world no matter what your background may be, no matter what you've been through, no matter what your struggle may be, no matter what your culture may be, no matter what your family history may be, no matter what your identity may be found in as far as other places and other things. If you can find your identity in Christ Jesus, know that you're one of his, you're a child of God, you're in the family of God, you're blessed in Christ Jesus and you got there by grace through faith and that you have a measure of the God kind of faith that created the worlds in the beginning 
beginning and that you can frame your own world with your faith. You can believe in your heart. You can speak with your mouth and the same faith that granted you access to salvation is the same faith that'll grant you access to all of the goodness of God in your life. Come on, somebody. I believe we have some I am faith people in the house. Some I am overcomers because of my faith. Hallelujah. Amen. This faith has a kick to it. It's got some power in it. Just this past week, I was, uh, I was uh, hungry for lunch, just like Jesus got hungry. I just Pastor Aaron got hungry too. And, and uh, anybody ever get hungry for lunch? 11, 11.30, 12 o'clock, somewhere in there. I got hungry for lunch, and there was a lot going on, and a lot of things happened. I said, well, I'm just going to grab some lunch just real quick. So I was trying to think of what was close to here. And, of course, there's Subway and there's, like, Robbie G's. And I'm thinking of a few places that just go real quick, you know. And then I thought, you know, there's that little, um, that little, uh, 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 that little yellow truck right down the, uh, that yellow uh, taco stand just right down the road about a half mile. Anybody know that yellow taco stand right by the flea market? And I, I've been there before, but it's been a while. And I thought, you know what, I think I'm going to get me some tacos, you know. I think I'm going to get me some tacos. I'm going to get some real tacos, you know. In case you're wondering, Taco Bell is not like uh, real tacos, okay? In fact, if you eat Taco Bell, you need a lot of faith. You need a lot of faith. You're going to need a lot of faith about an hour later is really when you're going to need to think, oh, Jesus. Mountain be removed. Gordita supreme. I'm not going to tell you all my Taco Bell stories, but there are some. So I thought, well, I'm going to go over here and grab a few tacos. And so I go in there, and I, I see, uh, I don't see him here. I see Daniel McBride. He was in there, and uh, he's on a diet. Um, he is. He is. He's, a, he's healthy. He's working out, exercising, and tacos are part of the diet. So praise God. <laughs> so I walk in there. He's sitting there with his uncle, and he's like, man, he's talking these tacos up. He's like, Pastor Aaron, you got to get the beef tacos. you got to get the beef tacos. He goes, I eat here at least once or twice a week. These are amazing tacos. And I said, it's kind of hot, though. He's kind of hot. The sauce is pretty hot. I'm like, ah, okay. I've been to Mexico. I've traveled. I know what hot is, you know. And so I get a few beef, I get two beef tacos and one chicken taco just in case the beef is not everything he said it was. And so, but the beef were amazing. They were really good. And so I got a beef taco and so I got, the, they, they give you green salsa, green salsa, and they got some red salsa. And I, get, I thought, you know, the, the green uh, would be the hot stuff, um, but they gave me the green stuff because they were trying to be nice to me because it's not the hot stuff. The red was actually really crazy hot. I didn't even touch that because all I got was a little bit of green. So I just like, what well, they said it's real hot. So I just put like one little, just one little drop on the end of my, my, uh, my taco there, you know? Just one little drop on the end of my taco. I'm like, this ain't gonna, I probably won't even taste this, you know? Probably won't, won't be nothing to this. And I pulled it up to my mouth. And I took a bite and I was like, mm, that's good. Whew. <sighs> Got a little fire in him. Woo! One little drip of that green salsa got some kick, man. Got some, it's, that's some, that's some potent stuff right there. And I, oh, it's just so hot. I gotta have some more. I just gotta have a little bit more. So I put a few drops in the next bite. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm taking it as much as I can. Just, just a little bit of that had a lot of punch to it. Had a lot of punch to it. And I think there's some of you in here, and you're, you're thinking, I just don't have a whole lot of faith, Pastor. You know, I mean, but, but I got good news for you. If you got enough faith to get saved, yeah. I'm not saying you shouldn't grow in your faith. I'm not, sure, I'm not saying it shouldn't expand. I'm not, should, I'm not saying you shouldn't uh, exercise it. But I am saying this. If you got enough faith to get saved, you got some faith. Yeah. You prayed to a God you didn't see. Yeah. The majority of you in here just worshiped a God you didn't see, put money in a bucket to a God you didn't see. You got more faith than you think you do. I said, you got more, more faith than you, you think you do. And, and if you would just realize what you got and the power and the potency of what you have already within you and you get to using what you got, you'd come to find out that there could be some mountains that you've been letting sit there for years that could be moved in your life if you just step up to the plate and say, the same faith that I received my salvation with is the same faith that I'm going to release over this issue in my life in the name of Jesus. No more addiction, praise God. No no more smoke and addiction. No more drug addiction. No more pornography addiction. No more lust addiction. None of that. No more in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Now, Jesus, he said something in another similar circumstance in Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, excuse me, Matthew chapter 17, forgive me. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. And Jesus says this, and put it on the screen when you have it. Matthew 17, verse 20. And right in the middle of this, he, he tells his disciples, he says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, wouldn't it be fun to be in one of Jesus' illustrated sermons? Be right there, he's pointing at mountains and mustard seeds. He got all kind of cool stuff going on. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you if you have faith. Now, I believe we cleared up the truth and the fact that we have a measure of the God kind of faith. Am I talking to the right people still? Yeah. Jesus just went ahead and said, if you have faith, as a, as a what? It's a mustard seed. Now, you've probably seen a mustard seed before, but in case you haven't, put a picture of a mustard seed on the screen if you have that. Look at that in his hand. Bring me one of those. Here's a, a, a bucket of mustard seeds. See this? Y'all want to see it? Here's a, here's a little bucket of, of mustard seed. So when Jesus is saying, you want to grab one? Can you grab just one? There you go. It's hard to do. Anybody want one? Sorry, he's going to go. He has enough faith for you. Praise God. I'm kidding with you. I'm kidding with you. <laughs> Praise God. All right, everybody's going to get one on the way out if you want one. I'm not saying you're going to keep it because you might lose it because it's so small. But he says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, look how small this, this is. Look how, small, look how small these mustard seeds are. I mean, I don't know how many I have in my hand. We bought a, a five-pound uh, five bag. I don't remember how much, it was only like 14, 15 bucks, five pound bag. I don't know how much is in a five pound bag, but it's gotta be a bunch, right? It's gotta be a whole bunch. And he says, if you have faith as a, as a grain of mustard seed. Now, even if you walked in here and you didn't have a very good week, you know, even if you walked here and you hadn't had things going just right for you, even if you walked in here and you said, Pastor Aaron, if you only knew all the mountains in my life, I mean, seriously, Pastor, it, if you only knew all the issues that I'm facing, all the things I struggle with, all the things I'm dealing with, all the, don't eat it, Josh, don't eat it. <laughs> if you only knew what I was dealing with, you know, Pastor, you would think uh, um, you need a lot of faith. You need a lot of faith. And while I, I do believe in the importance of great faith, Jesus talked about that, talked about strong faith. Abraham had strong faith. I do believe in that. But Jesus I just like how simple he makes it, you know? I like, I like how he makes it easy. I mean, it does cost everything to follow him, and you do give up your life to follow him, but at the same time, Jesus just opens the door wide open, and then he opens up the door to the impossible being made possible by saying, if you just have faith as a mustard seed. Does anybody in here believe they got at least as much faith as this mustard seed? Anybody, can we just start there? Can we just start the anybody? You, you got you sure? You sure, Miss Kim? But what about you? You got you got you got enough you got enough faith to put your hand in the, the bucket and and get some. Anybody else? Y'all got some faith back here? Now look, if you just look at this, it don't look like much, does it? It don't look like as much to it. It don't. Sorry, y'all. Um, she wants. She said she wants to plant hers. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good idea. See what it does. Amen. But Jesus is saying, even something as small as a mustard seed, he says, if you got faith like that, he says, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. From where to where? From where to where? From here to there. I mean, I mean, I guess we could get over... Uh, we could get over and we could talk about, you know, whether it should be cast into the sea or it should move from here to there. But uh, I'd probably just be happy if it did anything. You know what I mean by that? Like if it went from here to there or moved into the sea, I know we should be specific, but I'm just saying a mountain moving is a mountain moving, isn't it? Amen. I said a mountain moving is a mountain moving. I, I believe, 
I'm believing that there's some of you in here that you've just, you've just been letting things go for a while because you think you're trying to get to a place where you can believe. And all I'm telling you is this, if you can just sit here and say, I believe right now that things are changing in my life, I believe with you, I'll join my mustard seed with your mustard seed. Maybe we can have some double mustard seed. Some double mustard seed faith. How about that? How about we have some, what if we have a whole room of people in here who say, you know what? We got enough faith together that we believe to see mountains move in our life. We believe to see supernatural things happen in our life. We believe to see things change in our life. We believe to see the impossible made possible. Jesus said, if you believe, if you would believe all things are possible. Now look at me, don't, don't. Don't give me all this, you're giving people too much hope, Pastor. You're giving people too much hope. You know what I mean? Look, pe people are hopeless enough without, without people being positive. You know what I mean? They, they need someone that says, you know what? Here's some faith. Do something with what you got. Do something with what you got. Do something with what you got. Work 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 what you got. Because if you work what you got, Jesus said, what you got may be small, but it's got enough power in it to move something big. May look like little. May look like little, but sometimes big things come in small packages. Sometimes your faith may not look like it's all that much, but if... You just got, you just got enough. Say, I, I, got, I got enough to get saved. Amen. I got enough to get out of darkness and into the light. Amen. I got enough to be in the family of God. I got enough to be called one of God's kids. I got enough to be called redeemed and healed and blessed. I got enough to get into heaven. I got enough to sure believe I can pay my car off. Dear Lord Jesus, I, I, I sure got enough faith to believe that my kids are gonna be all right. They're gonna serve the Lord. I sure got enough faith to believe we can make the house payment this month. Praise, I sure got enough faith to believe that, man, if he brought me out, that he's gonna carry me all the way through to the end. I sure got enough faith. Everybody say, I have, faith. I have faith. Hey, what's up, Junior? I have faith. I have, I have at least mustard seed faith. I got at least mustard seed faith. What, what if you move up to a sunflower seed? Well, we might really be doing something then, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you want to grab one there. Yeah. And everybody have a chance to get one on the way out of service. You can get as much as you want if you want, really. I got two more buckets for the 11 o'clock service. So I have mustard seed faith. I have mustard seed faith. I'm going to use what I got. Amen. I'm going to use what I got. may not look like a lot right now, but I believe it's enough to move a mountain. Amen. I believe it's enough to move a mountain. <laughs> I got some people waving at me. <laughs> Listen, I was at the gym. Y'all already know I work out a bunch because my muscles are bulging out of this jacket. <laughs> I have to change coat sizes and everything. <laughs> goes without saying that's strong faith isn't it yeah y'all already know that but um you want some more hey, hey pass her some oh she wants some in her uh in her uh little can of vitamins or something i don't know Go ahead. she's gonna dig some out oh she got a shovel she got shovel faith did y'all see that i'm impressed i'm impressed i was at the gym a couple of weeks ago and there's a as a guy that i saw that I saw and he was, uh, he just, it's like his first week working out. His first week, y'all just pass him some down, pass him down if you want. It's his first week working out. Anybody ever start working out, you know? Uh, how, okay. And if it's cardio, you're not going very long. You know what I mean? It's like you did 10 minutes, you're like, man, I need some fried chicken. That 10 minutes made me hungry. Not eating a protein shake. I didn't get here because uh, I, I drink protein shakes. I, I get here because I like fried chicken. That's... But I saw this one, this one young man, he, had, he just started working out. He just started working out. And, I, and uh, I'm, I'm, I don't do a lot of weight, but I, was, I looked over him and he's laying down on the bench. He's laying, on his, laying down on the bench on his back. And this is one of those exercises where you put the weights, you know, the, uh, the dumbbells in your hand, and you pull it back like that, and you go up, you land on your back. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Like that. And so he's got uh, a five-pound weight in each hand. <laughs> so I said, 
I looked over and I got my, I'm listening to, you know, I listen to podcasts, preaching, leadership. I'm listening to something. I'm not just like in there fooling around. I like to work out and I like to spiritually work out too. I like all of it happening at the same time. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. And so I look over, I look over at him and he's got, he's got those five pounds. And um, <clears throat> I did get a smile on my face. Not because I was being judgmental, all right? And it wasn't Planet Fitness, all right? I know that's a judgment-free zone, but every other gym, you know, it's not a judgment-free zone. There's a lot of judging going on, like, aha. You know it's true. You know it's true. So I saw five pounds. I'm like, <laughs> praise the Lord. So I went up. I went up to him and said, hey, brother. Man, I believe you can do it. You can do it. And he said something, and I loved it. He said, hey, you got to start somewhere. I like that faith. I like that positive. I like that comeback. You know, hey, you got to start somewhere. I, I may not be as, as strong as some of the other people in here, but I'm not ashamed to, to use what I got. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to get up in here and get my five pound weight on. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to swing that five pound. He put it down pretty quick because it was too light, really. He needed to lead him away. But five pounds, I was like, bro, my, yeah. Avery Jane could do that. You know what I'm saying? Like Avery Jane could do that. He's swinging. <laughs> Sorry, this is off topic just a little bit. Anybody ever go on the, go on the gym and then you like do a burnout? You know what I mean by a burnout? If you're doing a burnout, that means your, your arms, and they're done. They're done. So, but you kind of, I started like a little higher weight and then I work all the way down. So I'm like really hurting. But by the time I finish, I got like 10 or 15 pounds in my arm and then a, like a girl walks around the corner. Got my 10 pound weight and I'm like, ah, let's put the 10 pounds down. Praise God, just... She don't know I've been burning out, you know what I mean? She don't know I've been burning out. I can hardly walk in here. What's the point? Use what you have is what I'm saying. Use what, don't be ashamed of what you got. What you got is enough to get you into glory, get you into heaven one day. Why don't you just go ahead and use what you got and say, instead of saying, I wish I had faith like so-and-so, I wish I had faith like so-and-so, you got enough faith right now to move the mountains in your life. Why don't you go ahead and use what you got? Use what you got. Say, so what do you mean, Pastor? And how am I going to use what I got? That means you take what you got from the Word of God, you get it in your heart, and you get it in your mouth and say, man, things are changing in my life. Things are changing in my life. Things are turning around in my life. I'm releasing my faith right now. Praise God. You need to say it. I have a measure of the God kind of faith. Oh, somebody just say it. Say, I have a measure of the God kind of faith. One more time. Say, I have a measure of the God kind of faith. Because you do. You do. You do. And Jesus said, if you just had faith as a mustard seed, he said, you can move mountains. You can move mountains. So do you just, just release your faith every now and then when you have a mountain range in your life or a mountain or an issue? No. Scripture says we're to live by faith. Just shall live by faith. Actually, four times in Scripture, old and new, just shall live by faith. That means... My lifestyle is a lifestyle of faith. I live like this. Live like this. One minister said it this way, God would not design a plan for your life that did not require faith. God would not design. That means there's going to be some steps that you take that will have to be steps of faith. Have to be steps of faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Timothy, Paul writing to a young mentor in the faith, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. The problem is a lot of people's fight is, is not the fight of faith. They just like to fight about all kinds of stupid stuff. Fight with people. Mostly they're brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Let's fight with each other, fight with our family, let's just fight. And you spend most of your time instead of dealing with mountains and real issues and things that your faith needs to be geared toward, you just fighting all kind of un unnecessary fights. But if we'll fight the good fight of faith, I believe we will lay hold on eternal life and we'll look back in our life and say, 
Mountains were moved. Mountains were moved. Now, Jesus didn't give a qualifier in Mark chapter 11 says, and say, you know, have the faith of God for whoever, actually not whoever, if you're an ordained minister. Actually not whoever, only if you've been to Bible school. And actually not whoever, only if you've been to our grow classes at Christian Worship Center. I only, Jesus didn't say that. He said whoever. That means no matter where you're at, no matter what you're dealing with or facing or whatever your background may be, if you have faith, you know the scripture and you've heard it said probably plenty of times, God is no respecter of persons. Absolutely true. But he is a respecter of faith. He is a respecter of faith. Faith gets God's attention. I dare you to read the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all the miracles and the healings and all the things that happened and how many times Jesus said, ooh, that's some faith right there. You got great faith. He told one centurion and wasn't even in the people of God per se at that time. Israel, Israel wasn't a Jew. He said, you have greater faith than anybody in the whole country. Jesus noticed his faith. You can get Jesus' attention with your faith. Amen. Praise God. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that things are changing in your life this, this week. You're going to take that mustard seed and say, all right. All right. This is enough to get started right here. And it's enough to move some stuff in my life. To be honest with you, some people, the longer they walk with God, sometimes they deal with doubt and disappointments because they, they deal with real issues and their faith, instead of getting stronger, actually goes like a nosedive. You know what I mean? That's why Jesus said, have faith like a child. Have faith like a child. Why? They just believe you. Right? When my kids were small, if you told them the sky was green, they'd say, okay, dad. Right? If I told them a frog was a bird, they'd go, look at that bird. Why? They'd believe me. Why? They have childlike faith in their dad or their mom that we're telling them the truth. And if you'll just take God at his word, right? How does faith come? By hearing, hearing by the word of God. That means I'm receiving the word of God today and I'm not mixing it with a bunch of any other stuff. I'm just taking God's word, not experience and opinion and every other thing they've ever seen happen or heard happen. I'm just going to take what God says. And I'm going to believe it. I'm going to act on it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to release it in my life. I believe things are changing in my life. We can see mountains move. So we can see mountains move. Whoever can talk to whatever. Whatever.